The companies that make up the pharmaceutical industry are among the largest corporations in the world. Together, these businesses have come to be known as Big Pharma. In 2004, their combined global sales were over half a trillion dollars, with Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson leading the pack. In the U.S., the core of Big Pharma's immense profits is from sales of prescription medication. And since these drugs can only be prescribed by medical professionals, most of the industry's promotional and marketing activities are directed at doctors, pharmacists, and other health care providers. This starts out at the first day of medical school, and in many medical schools, uh, even the incoming students that, you know, are two years away from, from, from seeing a patient will start to get gifts from uh, the pharmaceutical industry. And as, um, uh, as these students get farther along in their medical education, the interactions and the gifts escalate to free lunches, to dinners. Champagne, brunches, happy hours, New York jet tickets. No matter where you spend the money, you make money. And my boss always told me, don't worry about it. There's, there'll always be more funding. Spend what you can. In fact, if I give you $100,000 to spend, Gene, I want you to spend 200000 In addition to providing gifts and trips, perhaps the most potent weapon in the drug rep's arsenal is free drug samples. In 2004, the industry gave away the retail equivalent of almost $16 billion worth of drugs, and these products are the chief enabler of the marketing machine. And what it is is a way of getting both patients and physicians hooked on their product. In any town USA, you walk into a physician's office, and you walk into a room that's usually a 10 by 10 room full of hundreds of thousands of dollars of samples they're all the most expensive branded drugs. Uh, these are drugs that cost upwards of, you know, $100 to $300 a month, and the office is full of them. A physician prescribing the appropriate medication is not necessarily what the industry needs. What the industry needs, or a particular company, is the, the physician prescribing their medication. Before a drug can legally be sold in this country, it has to be approved by the FDA wherever it's made. Approval depends on the company demonstrating in clinical trials that a new drug is reasonably safe and effective. But compared with what? They don't have to compare their new drugs with existing drugs to treat the same condition with the best standard treatment. In most cases, they only have to compare their new drugs with a placebo. The FDA currently only requires, when you are seeking to have a new drug approved, that you show that that drug is better than a placebo. In other words, that the drug is better than nothing. That's really not very useful information for the doctor. Before 1980, most clinical research was uh, funded by the National Institutes of Health. During the 90s, most of that research got pulled out of universities and uh, was, being done, was brought to uh, for-profit research organizations. The problem is that that gave virtual complete control over the research to the drug companies. They could design the studies. They have control of the data so that ma many of the authors of the most important articles uh, published in our best journals aren't even allowed to see their own data. They don't get free access to their own data. And they have control of a publication. Studies are frequently uh, either hard to find or the results are manipulated by drug companies. I think the most shocking thing is to find that that evidence is simply not available or it is distorted. Some health news now. Quindi, quando in televisione ci viene detto che una nuova ricerca scientifica ha stabilito una certa cosa, nessuno è in grado di verificare se sia vero oppure no. When drug companies set the research agenda, do the research and design the research, have tremendous influence over the people who get to write it up, and in fact have tremendous influence over the journals that publish it because they're very, very beholden to drug companies for their own financial well-being. More than half of the budget of the uh, division of the FDA that approves new drugs and oversees drug safety is funded by the drug companies. 90% of the clinical studies are funded by the drug companies. 59% uh, of the experts who write the clinical guidelines have an active financial relationship with a drug that's being considered in the process. Quindi l'industria farmaceutica, prima di tutto, ha preso il controllo del sistema medico universitario. 
poi ha istituito l'Associazione Medici Americani, che da allora sono gli unici autorizzati a praticare legalmente. In seguito si è impadronita dell'intero processo di sperimentazione delle medicine. Dopodiché influenza pesantemente le pubblicazioni accademiche che promuovono queste medicine ed infine controlla l'ente federale che di quelle medicine dovrebbe garantire la sicurezza e la non tossicità. All'estremo opposto ci sono i cittadini malati e nel mezzo stanno i dottori che devono curarli e che possono basarsi esclusivamente su informazioni generate e controllate dalle industrie farmaceutiche che nessuno ha più la possibilità di verificare. In questa esasperata ricerca del monopolio totale dell'informazione, nemmeno Internet è stato trascurato. There are a number of groups on the internet that look like these bona fide, disinterested patient groups that would only want the best thing that's right for them, and you come to find out that they're 100% funded by a drug company. Ma tutto questo, evidentemente, all'industria farmaceutica non bastava ancora. In recent years, Big Pharma has pushed its way into the traditional doctor-patient relationship and found a new way to increase sales by targeting patients directly and independently, largely through television advertising. Do you know about the purple pill called Nexium? I know. I know. Gardasil is the only cervical cancer vaccine that helps protect against four types of HPV. E ora che la lista obbligatoria degli effetti collaterali è ormai più lunga dei pregi delle medicine, gli aspetti negativi vengono messi direttamente in bocca ai protagonisti dello spot che li presentano con lo stesso tono gioioso e accattivante delle qualità da decantare. In questo modo si confondono definitivamente le acque per un pubblico disattento e impreparato su un aspetto che già veniva presentato in modo ambiguo e altamente irresponsabile. Last year between 3 and 5 billion prescriptions were written in the US alone. And for all of its many miracles and heroism, the pharmaceutical fantasy has also left disaster in its wake. The tragedies of drug side effects are being exposed daily. Prozac, Biox, Celebrex, Baycol, Larium and Zoloft, just to name a few are deeply uncomfortable reminders that secrecy and sales have often circumvented safety. And what I found after analyzing government databases and peer-reviewed journal articles, I found that 784,000 people are dying annually, prematurely, due to modern medicine intervention. There's 122,000 people that die every year from known side effects to prescription medications. The drug industry is the most successful global industry in the world. What they don't want you to do is get better. Because if you get better, their market's gone. 